Hello, and in this video, we're going to continue on our carabino pin housing. Uh, we're going to add in the holes for where our clickers go and some internal features as well. Uh, so to start, I'm just going to add a plane. So I'm going to hit plane, and I want it offset. So I'm going to click this front plane, and it's going to come out one inch, and that's fine because I'm going to sketch and then uh, go up to the face. So I'm just going to keep it one inch. You can move it closer if you wanted, but we don't have to in this instance. Uh, so on this new plane, I'm going to start a sketch, and I'm going to turn to my front view so we can see what we're looking at. I'm going to start by just making a rectangle. So I'm going to use a, rectang a corner rectangle. Uh, we could do a center point rectangle as well. It's totally up to you. I'm actually going to use center point so I can make sure it's centered on this object. Uh, so I'm going to start by making uh, just a rectangle. And I want it to be a 0.74 long and to by 0.24 as my height there uh, and I got those measurements by uh, measuring those with my dial caliber uh, then we wanted dimension so I'm going to hit dimension and I know from this edge to where the clicker begins uh, should be about 0.079 uh, inches so 0.079 and again we just use our dial caliber to get that measurement hit our green check to accept and you can see it's fully constrained, uh, so we'll go ahead and start on our uh, extrude. It's going to be a remove. I'm going to change to an ISO view so you can see what's going on. we got to tell it what to remove, and it's not going to be a blind. It's going to be up to face, so I want up to face. I'm going to tell it what to remove. I'm going to tell it what face to go to. I'm going to change the direction so it actually goes through that face. And I need an offset distance so it knows how far to cut into it. Uh, in this case, the offset distance I'm going to select just as long as it's bigger than your wall. That's fine. Our wall is 0.04, so I'm going to do 0.06 just to make sure it gets through. And then I'm going to change the direction so it cuts through. Uh, and you can see it creates that hole we want there. Uh, so hopefully that helps you to create the first hole. Uh, once we have one hole, we can select and save that. And then you can use your circular pattern. So you may already be on linear pattern. We want a circular pattern. And all you have to do is change what it says part pattern to feature pattern. Uh, then we're going to hit extrude for since that's what we just did. And then we need our axis. The easy way of doing that is just click on this uh, select mate connector. And then we just select the center of our object. Uh, hit our green check to accept. And that gives you your four, four holes for your uh, clickers. Uh, next, if we look on the edge, uh, it's kind of smoothed off so you can get better access to your clicker. Uh, so what we're looking at is right in this region, it's smoothed off. Uh, so to create that smoothed off feature, I'm just going to start a sketch and I'm going to extrude it uh, into that feature so I can get rid of that shape uh, that I'm looking at there. So what I want to do is extrude. I'm just going to start a sketch. I can just go on this edge right here, and if I turn to my right view, it's going to be really difficult to see it. So I'm going to keep on this front view or this isometric view to create this sketch. Uh, so if we look at this uh, kind of feature that we're adding, it's cutting out a rectangular pattern that goes outwards. Uh, it doesn't cut everything all the way back, but it does cut a rectangular pattern so that you can kind of get your fingers into it and reach into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit a rectangle and I'm going to turn my view just a little bit more using my mouse, uh, right clicking my mouse. Uh, and all I'm going to do is go to the midpoint and hit escape. I want a rectangle, but I want this time to be a, a corner rectangle. And I want to get that midpoint and I want to go up and above. And then I'm going to hit the coincident and put that. Uh, on the midpoint, if I can angle my view, I want that to go on my midpoint as well. Uh, how far up you go, totally up to you, as long as you cover up the whole thing. It doesn't matter if we go up extra, uh, it's not going to take out any bit of our object. Uh, then we want to extrude, and we're going to hit extrude, and we want to remove, and we're going to go... First we have to tell it what to remove. We want to remove this portion here. And which way to remove, it's already going in the correct direction. And then how far to remove, uh, we only want to go up to this uh, next edge. 
Uh, so you can set your distance if we measured it, we measured earlier, it's 0 0.079. We can set that value or we can change that to a set value. Uh, so that goes back 0 0.079 and gives us kind of that grooved in portion where we can uh, slide our fingers into that object. Uh, so hopefully that helps you to create that feature. Again, if I wanted to use a circular pattern, you could wait till the end and do all of them circular pattern at once. Uh, but we'll go ahead and do each one individually. So we tell it what we, first we have to change it to a feature. We tell it what we want to do a circular pattern with. Again, we need our axis. So again, I'm just hitting the, the make connector going on the edge. And then we want to apply it per each instance. So it does it all for it. Here, I'll green check to accept. And that gives us that grooved in portion uh, so that we can easily slide our thumbs in. Or a finger or whatever you use to hit that dial. Uh, next is a little trickier. We're going to do our inside components. Uh, so our, if we look, there's a groove portion that kind of steps st steps up in between each one of these. Uh, so to show where that's going to be, I'm going to first turn back to my uh, home ISO view. Uh, maybe I will. To our front home ISO view. Uh, and I want to bring back the sketch for this circle and this one in the back here as well. Uh, so I'm going to go back in time and find those uh, sketch planes. So I have sketch 2 and sketch 3 I'm going to bring back. Uh, then I'm going to take away my pen housing for a second so we can just see those sketches. And we want to sketch on the front one, the larger one first. So we're going to sketch on that, farther, on that larger one first. I'm going to change to my right view. And we can look directly at it, and I'm going to project and use that larger circle that we, sketch we already have. Uh, then I'm going to turn my pen housing back on so we can see what we're looking at. So if you looked, that large circle is the outermost ring on our pen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make select a line, and I'm going to make a triangular shape that goes from the outer edge uh, up somewhere towards the middle, and then back to my outer edge. I want it coincident on the outer edge. Uh, then I'm going to hit escape, and I'm going to use some of my constraints to help me out. So I'm going to first do a tangent, and I want my line touching the line for the hole in the housing. And same thing on this side, my line touching the hole for that housing. Uh, if you made sure to do coincident on your outer edge, you can see it's already done that coincident on the outer edge. Otherwise, you have to go back, select your coincident tool, and add that in. Uh, that's all I need for this sketch, so I'm going to hit my check to accept this sketch. Uh, then I'm going to turn my pen housing back off and change my view so we can see it a little bit. Now I'm going to do a similar process on this uh, outer one as well. Uh, so I'm going to sketch and go on that outer plane. Uh, this time I'm going to again change to my right view and I'm going to project and use again. So project use. Uh, this time I don't have to draw a new line since I already have the lines there. I can select that line, select that line, and then I'm going to select that outer ring so I have a closed object. Hit our green check to accept. Uh, then I'm going to change back to an ISO so we can see what we're doing on this last step. Then I need to loft. So I'm going to loft uh, from one object to the next object. And we want this to be an add. We don't want to new so we got to merge with all so it merges with our pen housing uh, once we do that it should add on to our pen housing so if we turn our pen housing back on you can see what it merges on and it adds to our pen housing again we've been doing our circular pattern throughout so i'm going to circular pattern and then i'm going to select that loft we just completed oh first we got to change it to a feature pattern then i can select the loft and we want it to go around again, same same way as before. We can select that make connector, get any of the center line objects. We want four instances, so it goes all the way around. And when we select our check, it said, oh, we didn't apply it per instance. So I'm going to go back and edit. Uh, again, I'm going to select the center housing, and we're going to apply per instance, so it applies to each one of those instances. Hit a green check to accept, and that gives us uh, that outer housing. Uh, next, we have to add in uh, the component that goes on that keeps your clickers in place. Uh, to do that, I'm going to sketch on that plane we just created, and I'm going to do a rectangle. I'm going to do a corner rectangle, and I'm just going to start somewhere towards the middle, and I want to go all the way up to uh, where my outer housing ends at. So I, I want to go past there 
all the way to that outer ring. I don't want it on the edge, but I do want it on that line there. So when I do that, in this case, it selects and gives me a distance. I want it to go down 0.5 inches, and I want my width or my, my depth of this object to be 0.02. Uh, in this case, I did select a, a constraint on the object, so it's not going to keep that 0.02. Uh, so I have to go back and find a selected a midpoint, and I want to get rid of that midpoint. So I'm going to delete that sketch entity, and now it's going to go down to that point of two. Hit my green check to accept, and then I have to extrude that out. So I'm going to hit extrude, uh, click on that uh, on that shape I need to extrude out, and I'm going to go point oh for the uh, depth of my cell. Hit our green check to accept. And then we need to fill it or round off that edge. So we're going to hit fill it and round off that edge. Again, this is going to be 0.04 to match off my housing. And that gives us one of those pieces. Uh, then we can use our circular tool to make it go all the way around. So again, circular tool, uh, feature pattern. I'll unselect extrusion and fill it. And then our axis, again, same way as we've been doing. I'm going to zoom out so we can see. We want to make sure we're on the center. And apply per instance. And it goes to all four. Uh, next, we're going to mirror that object across. So if I'm zoomed in, I want to mirror that object across. So I'm going to select my mirror. I'm going to select this uh, pattern we just did. So again, we want a feature. I'm going to select my extrusion 6 and my fillet. Uh, then I need to select my mirror plane. So if we look at our object, we can see if we look straight on, my mirror plane is going to be this plane that cuts right through the middle. And I want to mirror across that. Uh, so that's going to be the top plane I'm mirroring across. Hit my green check, and you can see it goes up on the top. Now I have to do the circular pattern again for this top feature. So this mirror, so again, change to a feature pattern. I'm just going to select mirror one. Again, do our axis of symmetry and go in the center of our object. Apply per instance, so each one's applied, and hit a green check to accept. So that gives us that internal pieces we need on our pen. So hopefully this helps you to add some of those internal features to your pen. Uh, there are some grooves that run up and down here as well. You could add those in as well. Uh, we're not going to do that at this time, but this gives us what we need to put our clicker components into place. Uh, hopefully this helps. Thank you and good luck.